Hi, I'm Nick. I'm Gavin. And together we're the Surrey Hill Smokers. And on today's video we're going to be covering ribs, the fast cook method. I like to have my ribs cooked quickly because I'm greedy and I love my ribs. We're going to be aiming for a four to five hour cook today and I'm going to take you through all of the stages from preparation to final result on the barbecue. So first step we really need to do is to trim the ribs. We need to remove any excess fat, any loose flaps of skin. Now there's some key parts you're going to need for this. You're going to need to have a tray to put the trimmed items in, a good chopping board, a nice sharp knife and a knife sharpener just in case you need to sharpen that blade. The last thing you want to do is have a blunt knife and tear into that meat. You need a nice clean cut slice through the fat, slice through any junk that's on there that you need to remove. So what we can do, um, let's, let's move the tray out of the way because we don't need to do, have that in, the, in blocking us up. So let's go through our first rack. So as you can see, it's fairly well trimmed as it is. There's a little bit of uh, loose skin on the end here. So there's a bit of a loose cartilage and bone there. So what we're going to do is just cut through the end on that. Just tidy it up. Because we don't want any loose stuff there, just looking scruff. I'm just going to throw it on the work surface, I'm going to clean it afterwards. Main key thing here is cleanliness. Make sure if you're walking away from it, you wash your hands regularly and you do all that sort of basic hygiene. Now that's pretty much it. Now as you can see here, there's this layer or membrane called the silver skin. A lot of people will remove this. I'm actually a fan of leaving this on and anybody I've done ribs for doesn't really mind. There is no right or wrong way here. If you like it, keep it on. If you don't, by all means take it off. It's quite easy to do, just get some kitchen towel and pull it off. I'm going to leave it on because that's the way we do our ribs here. Uh, Gavin might do his differently, but uh, you know, as I say, there is no right and there is no wrong. So that's our first rack trimmed up and ready to go. So we'll put that into the tray and we'll go on to our second rack. Again, there's a little bit of excess fat here. We can probably trim that back. Just tidy it up, and make them a little bit more presentable. We're not going for competition ribs here. We just want it to look tidy. Bear in mind that anything loose and flappy will probably cook and burn, so it might spoil the flavour. Again, I'm not going to touch that, uh, that membrane. One thing I have already done, which you haven't seen and I haven't done on cameras because it's a little bit boring, is, is I've actually washed these. They've been out of the fridge for probably two or three hours, so they're up to sort of a, a semi-room temperature. So you know, they're all clean, we've removed any excess blood or anything that might be in the package because uh, you know bones and things do seep out but these ribs that come from our local butchers in the village so they're pretty well trimmed and nicely nicely prepared already so they do a great job at Beacon Hill Butchers. So as you can see this is not a particularly uh, difficult task it's just using a bit of common sense there's little fragments of bone here that you know where the ribs have been chopped up at the, uh, at the butchers so we just make sure we clean all that up. We are going to lose a little bit of meat but it's such minimal amounts uh, that it's it's not really a drama. There's a little bit of fat scuzz there. Let's get rid of that. As you can see, nice sharp knife goes through it like butter. And that's what you want. You don't want to be tearing at the meat because it will ruin it. While it's raw, you've got a fair bit of uh, flexibility in the meat. But uh, you know, you, you make sure you have a nice sharp knife. Look, we can go through that. No dramas at all. Cool. So that's, I might probably actually just remove that last bit of bone because it's uh, it's just going to cause us dramas. So there we go, we have our four racks of ribs, all freshly prepared and ready to go. So let's get into how we now uh, rub, these, uh, rub these ribs up and get them ready to put onto the, you know, rest and put on the grill. So let's put them down on the chopping board. What we're going to do is get our uh, Worcester sauce. Why are we using Worcester sauce? Well, we use it as a binder just to help us. Uh, help us with the, the rub sticking. It adds a little bit to the flavour, not much, uh, but it just adds a little bit of uh, flavour profile into into what we're doing here. <clears throat> I don't bother with the sprinkle side. I like to get quite liberal with the rub. Uh, there will be clumps in it. Does it matter? Not really, because you're going to crush it down with your fingers. You've got to use your hands. Again, if you're not comfortable touching raw meat uh, with your naked hands, by all means wear gloves. I like to just, you know, get my hands in there and see what I'm doing. It doesn't bother me. I'm quite good with hygiene, so uh, it's no stress. I mean, if you were cooking commercially, absolutely. You're gonna be wearing gloves and then, you know, make sure everything's done. So that's side one of those ribs done. So we'll flip it over. It's not so important on this 
because we want the membrane in, so it's not going to get in, but it's going to it's going to give us a little bit of crunch on the bottom and add a little bit of flavour. It's not going to get into the meat as such, but we don't so we don't need to go too nuts with the uh, rub on the bottom. So that's rack one rubbed and done. As you can see, the uh, rub's already soaking into the surface there, and uh, we're getting we're getting some colour from that paprika. Again, oh, forgot to put the binder down. So. See, even I make mistakes, but I caught it before we got too far. So, second rack in. Again, same process. Just follow it through. It's not complicated, guys. And, you know, you don't have to spend hours rubbing, uh, rubbing the ribs. It's just put it on and let it sit. The key thing is to let it sit as well. We're going to talk about that shortly. But a little, a little unevenness in the uh, rub, no problem. So that's it. Ribs are rubbed. So let's put them back into the tray. And we need to leave those to rest for about an hour now, uh, just to let those flavours get into the meat uh, and infuse and, and bed down and melt a little as we've seen. They're already starting to melt with the binder, uh, as you can see. So we just leave those, cover them up, don't put them in the fridge. We need them at sort of room temperature, ideally for, uh, for, the, for the cook. We don't want to be putting freezing cold meat onto the, uh, onto the smoker. So today we're going to be doing those ribs on my Oklahoma Joe offset smoker. It's called an offset smoker because the firebox is separate to the actual cooking chamber. So you're not cooking anywhere near the coals. The fire is at one end and the food is the other. The good thing about the Oklahoma Joe, it's very uh, well made. It's thick gauge steel, so it holds temperature. To help hold that temperature in that cooking chamber, which by the way will take about 12 ranks of ribs. I have done that. I've done mass cooking for a, a party. It will happily take that. It'll take, uh, you know, all sorts of meats in there. But another part of it is it's got baffles in it. Those baffles allow us to keep the temperature from that firebox all the way through the cooking chamber at a pretty consistent temperature, maybe one to two degrees variance, if that. Uh, very, very important so we don't end up with hot spots burning that food. I still move the ribs around just simply because habit more than anything else. I also check every hour on the, on the smoker to make sure that it's, it's got enough fuel. It doesn't need fuel adding. Uh, I spritz and turn whatever's cooking. Uh, the spritz is very simple, we'll cover that shortly, but yeah, it's, it's just a process. I have a, a water pan in there to keep a little bit of steam so we keep the moisture up so we don't dry that food out. Okay, so one thing I would suggest is a good idea to invest in is a digital thermometer. You can buy extremely expensive ones. I'm a bit of a cheapskate, let's face it. Uh, I bought this on Amazon. It was about, it was no more than £20. I don't believe you can buy this model anymore, but there are similar. Uh, I've calibrated it and checked it in a pan of boiling water. Very easy to do. Get your temperature probes in. Get a pan up to water boiling up to, we know that's 100 degrees C. Stick the thermometers in and see what comes back. This is spot on for 17 quid. It's Bluetooth as well, so it connects to the app on my phone. I'll put a screen grab of what it looks like there. So I can actually monitor the temperatures. So guys, look. There's a lot of different opinions and views on this. I am a believer in just make your life easy. If it means having a fan, absolutely. I bought this USB rechargeable battery three-speed fan on Amazon for you know five, six pounds. It really wasn't expensive. Sometimes up in the smoke shack because it's sheltered, I don't get a lot of breeze through, so we do sometimes need to just help it along, help that fire along. If it slows down or I've missed it for some reason, it's dropped a little bit low, okay, we need to get that fire back up to a temperature. This is fantastic for doing that. You can hook it onto the, with the clamp here, hook it onto the, uh, hook it onto the firebox uh, bucket that I've got for the ashes, and just let it gently blow some air through there. It's just helping. Look, people go, you shouldn't need it. You should just be able to regulate the temperature using the firebox vents and the chimney. Well, as you can see from my chimney here, I can't regulate that because it's a tube going out and I've never regulated it using the chimney. I've only ever regulated my offset smoker using the firebox door and the vent that's on the door. So let's cover what we can use to smoke. We've got apple, oak, Beechwood, chestnut, and hickory chunks. Each wood has its own unique flavour. There are plenty of other woods. The main thing to remember is it's got to be well seasoned and it mustn't be a softwood. We can't smoke with softwoods, otherwise, you'll end up with food that is horrible tasting and also poisonous. It's very dangerous and don't use the likes of pine or spruce or things like that. It's not suitable for smoking. Now we've got another wood here, and I'll let Gavin explain this because it's a South African Brywood, uh, supplied by Brywood UK, 
Um, and we'll just talk about that very quickly, Gavin. This is Camille Doran or Camel Thorn. I mean, it is, as you say, not really designed for smoking, mm. but it is designed as a heat source. This actual wood itself can actually burn anything up to eight to 900 degrees. Amazing for like fries themselves or even pizza ovens that need those intense high temperatures. And I'm actually using some of that on the offset today, no, not for the flavour, but for simply the heat source. Because it burns so long and it's so dense, I'm able to leave this now for a couple of hours and it doesn't need any attention to it. So what we're going to do now is load the coals into the firebox grate. There's loads of different uh, theories over the firebox management on offsets. Some people like to have a fire basket. I have one. I can't personally get on with it. So what I've got is I've got the grates as a V, as you probably see. Now you can see those coals are red hot. They're in the firebox. We just need to let them settle down a little bit, and then we'll go to go. We won't put any wood on yet because we need to get that pit up to temperature. So what I'm going to do is I've opened the vent, and I'm also opening the door to let some more airflow. Obviously, we need to shut down the firebox chamber because. If we leave it open, that ain't going to do us any good. The heat's just going to come out, but we need to get those temperatures up in there before we can even put the ribs on. So let's get these ribs onto the pit. Let's talk in. So we've got the water bell, water tray here fill up um, with water, just simple water. You can put beer in there. You can put anything you really wanted, apple juice, whatever. I would always stick to water. Um, so let's get these ribs onto the, onto the pit. doesn't really matter where they go. As I say, the temperature's pretty consistent throughout the pit, so it doesn't matter if you put them across like that or lengthways, it really doesn't matter. So, we've got the ribs in the pit, let's get that shut down, sealed up, and let's get some smoking wood on the fire. So today, guys, we're gonna be using hickory to smoke these ribs. I think it's a really good combination. As I said, just have a play, see what, you're never gonna get it badly wrong, the worst you're gonna have to do is have another go. You're never gonna waste that food. So I've had these warming already on the uh, firebox, so let's get them in. We probably won't need all four of them. Now be careful, the fire, as you can see, is raging hot. I've got a piece of that uh, South African dry wood on there as well, just to give me some extra heat and a bit long length in there. So for now, I'm just gonna chuck two chunks on there, shut the firebox down, and keep those other two warming on the top. And that's good for us to go for an hour now, and we'll check back on in these ribs in one hour. It's now time to get it into the Texas cheat, crutch, wrap, whatever you want to call or whatever it's called, it's the same thing, right? There's two ways of doing that. You can use tin foil or you can use butcher's paper. I'm a big fan of using uh, foil. It works for me. So what you do is you take the ribs off, you wrap them individually, put them back on the uh, smoker for an hour. At this point, you don't need to use any smoking wood because the smoke has got into the meat. So now you're actually just cooking. What this enables you to do though, once you put it in that foil, is it allows it to uh, get some moisture and it steams the ribs almost to a certain extent. It, the moisture that's in there will come out and steam and it will cook and accelerate that process allowing us to get that cook uh, faster and smoother. There is another method and that's using butcher paper, right Gavin? Yeah, I mean butcher's paper is really good in the sense that when you wrap the extra ribs in there what it'll do is it'll create pretty much the same sort of environment as what you would get with a foil. The only difference being is it does cook it a little bit slower, it's not as intense in the sense that it will push it through as fast. But what it will do is it'll actually usually keep the bark more on the actual ribs that you're trying to build up uh, without softening it too much from the steam itself. So again, it's not a right or wrong element here. We're trying to get that across. You do what makes and suits you best and what you're happiest with, right? It's, it's all about having fun, cooking that food and just enjoying it. Gavin's a big fan of crusty barks. I'm not so much, right? But that's personal preference. So we have our differences, but both ways work equally as well. So guys, it's into the third hour. This is where we wrap the ribs. So we need to take them off the smoker and wrap them in a the foil. I'm now gonna show you that process and what we need to do. So, the first thing we need to do, get ready. Get our foil out, make sure you've got plenty of foil here. Get it flat and laid out. Now, we need to get the ribs off, off the smoker. Let's use our tongs, because they will be hot. Man, these look amazing. So we keep the lid on the smoker shut as long as possible, mainly to keep in the heat. Remember, once these are wrapped, we also do not need to add smoke wood, we just need heat source. So I've got my spritz here. Don't worry, I know it's in an auto glim detailing bottle, 
This is brand new when I got it. It's been through the dishwasher. I've disinfected the spray head. It's just a great medium to be able to spritz this down. Now the spritz in here is a mix of apple juice, clear apple juice that your kids would drink or you would drink, and apple cider vinegar. 50-50 split. It's a 500 ml bottle, so it's 250 milliliters of each. Simple as that. Nothing else needed. You can use water if you want, you could use beer, but as I say, I like an apple cider vinegar and apple juice. It adds a little bit of flavor to the mix. So we need to liberally spritz down these ribs and give them a load of moisture. What this is also gonna do is add to the moisture that's in the wrap and get these ribs really juicy and tender. It's gonna help steam them up and make them so tender they will fall off the bone. So we wrap them lengthways first and then we get the ends. It doesn't have to be crazy as long as it, it's pretty tight. So we roll it over once and we roll it over a second time and the same on this end. And that's good to go. Let's get these back on the, on the smoker and give them another round. <laughs> So guys, those ribs have been in that Texas cheap for an hour and a half. They should be nice and moist and tender and beautiful. It's now time to unwrap them, put them back into the smoker unwrapped with some sauce on there to set up now for the last half an hour or so. So we're aiming here, we're a little bit over, probably around about a five hour cook for these ribs. We can do it in four, I've just been uh, a bit slow on some of the parts, but it, you know, four or five hours, ideal time for this fast cook. So let me get some of these unwrapped and I'll get some video footage for you to see how amazing they already look. Opening that already smells amazing. Let's get these off and unwrapped. You do need to be careful, they are quite hot obviously. Running the pit are around about 250 degrees so we're running quite hot here just to get these done. Shut them down, keep that residual heat in. Oh man, these smell good. Oh, perfect. They're drawn back off the bone. They're looking like we really, really want how we really want them. So guys, we've got those ribs out of the wrap. What we're now gonna do is baste them up with some of my homemade bourbon sauce. So we just dribble some on, brush it in. Doesn't have to be too neat, just wanna get a coating on there. We can add some more sauce when they're out. This is just the initial layer to give that sticky, sweet barbecue rib taste that we want. These smell Amazing. So we'll shut that up and leave it for another 20 minutes or so, and then they should be good to go. So that's the ribs done. We've covered prep. That includes trimming, creating your own rubs if you chose to do that, resting times. Uh, we've also gone over the Oklahoma Joe and the offset smoker and the basics of what that consists of and how to do that. We've covered smoking woods today as well and also a fuel source with the South African wood that Gavin so well described there. And also that fire management uh, for that offset smoker because it's a little bit different to a normal barbecue. We've gone through the cook and you've seen the various stages of it where we spritzed it and turned it on an hourly basis. And we've covered the Texas cheat, crutch, whatever you want to call it, right Gav? True. Um, and wh which is better, butcher's paper or foil? And I think we've come to the conclusion that they're both the same. They have their both unique pros and cons, but you choose. So hopefully that's given you an oversight on how to do a quick four to five hour rib cook so you don't have to wait all day like Gavin does with his. Yeah. I'm just too greedy to actually wait for those ribs to be done. 
So Gavin, is there anything you'd like to add in onto this? No, I think that's covered it. It looks good. good. Smells good. So guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, the like button. Any comments or questions, please do drop us a line. Uh, we're happy to have a chat with you. But cool, we'll see you again soon on the next video.